Now that I have your attention, this is Pastor Kent with you. And we're looking at love. Do you realize, <laughs> have you even checked online um, how many times the, it's written in the Bible? Um, about love. Um, there are 98 Bible verses about love. 98. And 10 of them are about verses on love. 80 of them are about verses on agape love which is the love of God so that tells you that you know if you want to find out about love um, exactly where you should go um, why am I telling you that as your pastor um, because uh, you need to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God is love. We know that is on our minds, but often we don't live that way. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for being here with us. May I say and do what you want me to, and go where you want me to go, and say these things in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Why do we love, and what is um, love? Um, <coughs> there are many different ways to improve um, our love of God. Um, we're going to look at some of those verses this morning. Um, love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily argued. It comes with no record or warnings. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. Um, we need to understand that, that love is all about what is meant in the Bible. And love always has a plan and never asks anything in return. We're going to Luke at first. We're going to Luke chapter 6. Um, do to others as you would have them do to you. Many questions are posed to me over the days on are we to love our enemies and those that hurt us? Well, we need only look at Jesus Christ for that. Um, what did he do to the ones that hurted him? <sighs> he said, Father, forgive them for they know not 
what they do. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lead them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. You will be children of the Most High, because He is kind of the ungrateful and wicked because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. John 4 verse 13 says, The Pharisees challenged him, Here you are, appear as your own witness. Your testimony is not void. Romans 12 verse 9 says, Love must be sincere. Hate is evil. Cling to what is good. If your pastor, your priest, your rabbi, <coughs> your reverend, or your minister is saying that we are to love but hate this, okay, that is not of God, okay? Um, God does not hate anyone, okay? The ones that he detests and dislikes are those ones who are fake Christians or frauds or phonies or <laughs> they want you to believe that they are the most gracious person on the face of the earth. Romans 13 verse 10 says, Love does not harm a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfillment of the law. You could put in here, love does not harm our spouses either, our family, our brothers, our sisters, our mother, our father. Abuse is not of God. And there are a hundred verses on abuse in the Bible alone. So you need to understand that. Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 8 says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. So you don't seek to gain anything from it. It is not easily argued. It comes on record of wrongs. No record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects. We always protect. Always trusts. Always hopes. Always preserves. And love never fails. But where there is prophecies, they will cease. And there are tongues, they will be stilled. There, where there is knowledge, it will pass away. If we don't have love for our fellow brothers and sisters, and the love of our spouse, man, that sounds like a real warning to me. Um, 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 says, And now three remain, faith, hope, and love. But these are the greatest of love. Remember that. There's only three that really matter in this world. That's the faith, hope, and and love of others. Ephesians 4 verse 2 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with no other in love. Peter 4 verse 8 says, All love, love 
each other deeply because love covers your multitude of sins. We have to look past what that person has done to us. 1 John 4 verse 7 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Okay? <laughs> has been born of Elohim and knows Elohim. God is all about love. Okay? He came to this earth and died for us so that we never have to face eternal damnation. 1 John 4, 18 and 19 says, There is no fear in love, but protect love drives out fear because fear does has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made imperfect in love. He loves because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. John 4 verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay one's life down for one's friends. <clears throat> we need to be willing to do that. Here's one for us partners. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Okay, we need to understand that. Again, in Ephesians 5, verse 33 says, Whoever each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. With love comes care, compassion, and understanding. Colossians 3 verse 14 says, And all of these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Proverbs 10 verse 12 says, Hated stripes or strips up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Love can conquer all. Proverbs 17 verse 17. A friend loves at all times. A brother is born for a time of adversity. We need to understand that we are to love everybody all of the time, no matter how hard it is, no matter how rough it is, no matter how harmful it is. John, 1 John 3, 16 to 18. This is how we know that love is Yahweh. Laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, you can, the love of God, be that person. Dear children, let us not love with words, speech, but with actions in truth. Is you go to a church and that church says to you, I can't help you, but they have a billion dollar church, make no mistake, that person is not of God. First John 
4, verse 8 says, Whosoever does not love to know, does not know God, because God is love. Well, John 3.16, we all know this one, but I think it's important that we read all of what's there. So I'm going to get my Bible and I'm going to go to John 3 verse 16 and I'm going to read 16 to 18. So go with me to John 3.16 and with this I'll close um, because I think it's important that we close on this. Jesus knew what love was. Jesus knew what it was all about. John 3.16 This is how God loved the world. He gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world and that's actually a misconception because he did not send his Son into the world. He came into the world as his Son. Not to judge the world but to save the world through him. You see? You see? You see what I'm saying? There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, Elohim, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged and for not believing in Elohim and the only Yahweh and the judgment is based on this fact Elohim's light came into the world but people and their actions were evil all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed but those who do not that is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what Elohim wants make no mistake God gave us a life now let's listen to a couple of songs now this, you will know this name, it's Metallica, and they are Christian.
Yeah, I know I fooled you, didn't I? Yeah. That was a parody of Enter the Sandman by Metallica. Um, I got into heavy metal bands like Metallica and ACDC and Judas Priest. Um, yeah, I, I was right into them. So, of course, today I'm into the same thing. The next one we're going to listen to is by Brandon cross and sorry by blood good and it's called um, lamb of God
Well, that's a little bit of my world and how I deal with my depression. Um, the other thing I do is I pray to God to take it away. Well, sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's hell, and sometimes it's torture. But I always know that no matter what, God is there for me. If you're in the sound of my voice and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior and friend, or you're lost and backslidden, I urge you to say this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for your forgiveness for all of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe that you died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life. I believe that you rose again, and I ask you right now to come into my life and be my master and Lord. I repent of all of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life. I confess with my mouth that I am born again and have been cleansed by your blood. In Jesus' name, in Yahweh's name, sorry is what you should say, I say, Amen. <sighs> now that you've done that, you're a child of God. You need to confess with your mouth that you, Jesus Christ is Lord. You can do that on Blog Talk Radio, and you can uh, notify me and look me up. You can ask me on Facebook. My links is on this page. You can see me uh, at any time. Feel free to join me anytime at all. May God bless and keep you until we meet again. Father, thank you for this time that you shared with us. May your word prick their spirit and unharden their heart. And we ask these things in your name. Amen.